Hi everyone, my name is Ari Trigger. Thank you for coming to this webinar on using RTSP protocol for live view on a smart TV. Let me ask you something. Have you ever been relaxing on your couch when the doorbell rings? Are you too comfortable to get up and check who's there? Ever wished you could access your gate camera directly on your large smart TV? Well, today I have the perfect solution for you. Today, we dive into a tutorial on how to stream video from a ProVision ISR camera via the RTSP protocol directly to your smart TV screen. Whether your camera is connected through an MVR, in a remote location, or directly to your home network, this tutorial will walk you through the process effortlessly. We'll be utilizing the free VLC media player, which is compatible with installation on any smart TV. In VLC, we'll set up the link to connect either to a single camera within our local network or a camera located remotely. Additionally, we'll explore connecting to specific channels on the NVR rather than directly. The VLC's player software is compatible with both smart TVs and computers. For the sake of demonstrating the setup process conveniently, we'll use a computer. However, the same process applies on a smart TV with the only difference being the use of the remote control instead of a mouse and keyboard. During this training session, we'll cover the necessary configurations in the camera to enable RTSP protocol streaming that can be displayed in VLC player. Additionally, we'll set up an audio channel to accompany the video stream and create a link in VLC player for viewing both video and audio from the camera. We'll explore configuring the NVR to access specific cameras through the player. Furthermore, we'll learn about using DDNS, which is Dynamic Domain Name System, as an alternative to paying for a static IP address, ensuring cost-effective and reliable remote access to your devices. In the first step, we'll configure a camera to stream using the RTSP protocol, which is compatible with the VLC player. To begin, We'll access the camera's network settings, enable the RTSP protocol, and specify the port for transmission. When connecting to the camera through the player, it's important to select the transmission profile we intend to use. Each profile represents a specific broadcasting quality setting tailored to different needs. Each camera, when transmitting over the network, can broadcast in multiple streams each offering varying qualities of video. High quality streams are typically used for NVR recording to ensure clear and detailed footage. Additional streams are optimized for applications like remote viewing or management software, providing flexibility in how the video is accessed and utilized. We can set the qualities of each stream in the video window. For instance, we can configure the display at high resolution, while the secondary stream can be set to appear at a much lower resolution. To enable audio from the camera, whether it has a built-in microphone or allows for an external microphone connection, you need to navigate to the audio settings panel and enable audio transmission. This ensures that audio will also be recorded along with the video on the NVR. Once we have determined the port for the RTSP protocol, we can proceed to create a link. If we need to access a camera located outside of the network and our router has a fixed static address, we must configure port forwarding on the router to facilitate this connection. Now let's delve into the link that VLC player will use to view the camera. In the first example, where we are accessing a camera outside of our network, the first part of the link includes the username and password of the camera. The second part compromises the network address of the router behind which the camera is located, along with the port through which routing is directed to this camera's address. The third part is a profile number, representing the quality profile defined in the camera. If we want to display a camera on our local network, we can simply use the internal network address and port that we defined earlier.
Let's open the VLC player on the computer and learn how to use the link we just discussed. Once VLC player has launched, go to the playlist and right click to select advanced open. Select the network option as we're looking to stream a network. In this link field, enter the RTSP link directly into the camera. You can also modify previously used strings to suit your current needs. For this example, we'll choose a camera that is accessed from outside our local network and is streaming in mainstream. Once the link is ready, you can click on it to open the stream of our intercom camera. The link we just created will disappear after we close the VLC player. So let's save it by dragging it to the media library. And to keep things organized, let's rename it so we can easily identify it later. Remove the current shortcut from the playlist and let's create a new one for the same camera but this time for the substream. This means we'll choose profile two. To remind you where the stream qualities are defined, let's open the intercom's unit's web interface. In the network port configuration, you can see the RTSP port of this device. The same information is visible in the RTSP tab where you can see the profiles of this camera. In the video and audio settings, you can set the quality of each stream. Set profile two to the lowest quality possible for this example. Moving back to the VLC player, select profile two, Move this new shortcut to the media library, rename it, and double click to view. You will see now the same camera displayed in the lowest quality possible. By following these steps, you can easily manage and view different camera streams on your VLC player, whether they are main or substream. Now let's explore how to connect VLC player not just to a specific camera, but an MVR and a specific channel with it. Imagine a basic setup with four IP cameras connected to an MVR. To enable VLC player to connect to the setup, we need to enable the RTSP protocol on the MVR. Once this is enabled, we can access it from the local network and stream any of its channels on the smart TV's VLC player. If we want to view these NVR channels, from outside the local network, the router must have a static IP address assigned by the internet provider and port forwarding must be set up on the router. This configuration ensures that any attempts to connect to the router static address and specific TCP port will be forwarded to the NVR's RTSP traffic. To enable RTSP on the NVR, navigate to the network setting and locate the port tab. Here you should enable both the API server and RTSP with both encryption types set to base 64. The crucial step is to specify the port number for the RTSP stream. This port number will be used for router redirection as well. When RTSP streaming is enabled on the NVR, you can only access two types of streams. Mainstream, which is generally used for recording on the NVR, or substream, which is generally used when accessing video via web GUI or the VMS client. Now let's explore how to construct the RTSP link to access a specific channel on an NVR via the VLC player. In the first example, when accessing an NVR located outside our local network behind a router with a static IP address, begin with the username and password credentials of the NVR. Follow with the router's static IP address and RTSP port. 
and then specify the channel number and finally conclude with the quality type. If accessing the MVR within our local network, simply replace the router's static IP address with the MVR's local IP address. Let's see how it works on the VLC player. Once again, right-click and select Advanced Open and then select Network. You can either type the entire string, paste it from a text editor, or use previously saved links. For this example, we access an MVR from outside our local network, viewing channel one in mainstream quality. Click on the shortcut to test it out, and you'll see a high quality stream from our PTZ camera on the roof. Next, let's move the shortcut to the media library and rename it for ease of access later on. Now, let's add another link. This time, we'll find the camera number by logging into the NVR. Locate the Office DDA camera and go to the camera edit menu so we can locate the channel number. As you can see, it's channel number 15. So let's go back to the VLC player and change the camera number to 15. Double click to view it. Finally, let's move the shortcuts to the media library rename it and delete the old shortcut from the playlist. Now that we've learned how to add an IP camera via RTSP stream on VLC player on a PC, we're ready to do the same on a smart TV. Ensure you have a TV where you can install VLC player. If your TV doesn't support the Google Play Store, you should be able to find another media player app that can play RTSP streams. On this TV, we've already installed VLC Player, so let's go and open it. Navigate your way down to Browsing and locate the streams. As you can see, we've prepared some RTSP links in advance. We set these links using the same principles we've just shown you, with the only difference being that we use the VLC media player for TV and input the links via the TV's remote control. Currently, we're using this URL to view channel one on the NVR in the mainstream. Let's go ahead and change it to channel 13 and play. You can rename the links accordingly. If you have multiple cameras configured, you can seamlessly switch between the different cameras. I'll switch between the cameras and I want you to observe the quality of the images displayed on the TV. The final topic for this presentation is how to avoid paying for a static IP address for our router by using the DDNS method. By using DDNS, we utilize a free web service that monitors our router's IP address and links it to a domain name that we can set up.
we would still need to configure port forwarding on the router for the RTSP stream. To begin setting up the DDNS, navigate to the network configuration and then the DDNS screen. Here, enable DDNS option and select the auto DDNS website. Then you provide your NVR with a unique DDNS domain name. Once done, click on the register button and the website will check the domain's availability. If available, click apply to use this domain name. Let's go back to VLC player and test this new domain. Replace the static IP address with the NVR's new domain name and auto DDNS website. Let's go ahead and change the NVR channel number. I've decided to use the camera called Back Counter. First, navigate to the Edit Camera menu to identify the channel number. As you can see, it's channel 21. Now, let's go back to the VLC player and change the URL channel from number 15 to 21. Finally, double click to review the stream. We have added an RTSP stream via a DDNS URL to the VLC player. This concludes our training on RTSP connections Please remember that there may be limitations on the number of simultaneous connections to the camera. If multiple users need to view the same camera stream concurrently, consider using RTMP protocol and broadcasting to YouTube for scalability viewing. Thank you very much and goodbye.